And your occupation as well, please? I'm a business person. Okay, I was invited to this peace convention by a friend. And I came here because it was called a peace convention. But so I, I found this catalog, like a booklet, that said something about Yusuf. It was written that raised as a strong Christian, educated in Texas, UOT, he became very successful owning music stores, television shows, and was a music minister and preacher of the Bible. So I want to ask you, sir, as a preacher of the Bible, what was the, what was the reason or the point or the truth that you found in Islam that led to your conversion as a strong Christian and preacher of the Bible? That's a beautiful question. Because there's lights in my eyes, I don't know exactly where you are. Can you hold up your hand? Where I'm here, sir. There you are. I'm sorry. Now I see you. Your name is Gabriel? Yes, sir. In Arabic, it's Jibril. That's the angel I was talking about. So we, we're very happy to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And it's a pleasure for you to ask such a question in such a nice way. I'm privileged uh, to ask you that question. I wish I was there. I could give you a big hug. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Because when I was a Christian, see, I wasn't nice like you. You're nice. I was tough, you know. Uh, because I thought I had to save the world, I'm going to go out and preach a message and, you know, I'm still a little wacko, don't get me wrong, but not near as bad as I was. What I found, and this is important to know, what I found was in my Bible first. What I found was in my Bible first. Because I used to travel with a lot of the so-called preachers of Christianity. And some of the ones that I traveled with they don't represent real Christianity, by the way, but I traveled with them and I learned that I couldn't trust them. Especially when they would pick up the Bible and say, the Bible says, the Bible says. And afterwards I would say, it didn't say that. They say, who cares as long as the people think so. And so it bothered me so much that I started trying to really read and understand many different translations of the Bible. But they didn't match. So I said, obviously, you know, translation is not the real thing. I need to learn Koine Greek. I knew that the Latin, I had already studied Latin, and I knew that the Vulgate was only a translation of Koine Greek anyway. So when I went to the Koine Greek, it was hard. That was really hard, because those characters, they're, they're confusing, you know. I don't know if you know Greek, but it's weird Greek to me anyway. Then I come to know that, oh, by the way, actually Jesus' language was a form of Hebrew called Aramaic. A form of Semitic language called Aramaic. And I had no clue what that was. So I tried to learn the Hebrew. Now all along the way I'm taking, okay, interlinear Bible. I don't know if you know what that is. That's when you have the word in English and under it will have the word in Kone Greek. And you can look it up. Now, people like Ahmed Didat, Rahim Allah, and Dr. Zachar Naik, they have these giant computer brains, okay? I don't have that. Giant computer brains, they can process all this stuff in their head. And I traveled with Zachar many times, and I have to tell you, he can really do that any time, but this is not my subject. When I was studying it, I came to realize that there was a book called Strong's Concordance of the Bible. My father had a copy, so I would sit there. It's big. It's a very big book. And I would go through and look for these words. And then it will tell you in Kone Greek what's the root, what it comes from, and what it's related to. And where it's in the Bible. And then all of a sudden, I started discovering something really big. There's a whole lot of interpolation because if you look over here, the same exact word means one thing, but over here it means something else. 
And then statements that people say about the Bible are not true. If I quote to you from what we have in the Quran, I can quote it to you in the Arabic language. But how many people do you know that can quote the Bible in the original Aramaic of the New Testament or ancient Hebrew of the Old Testament? Not very many people, right? But I want you to look, while well, you're standing right there, Gabriel, look around this room right here. Now, I, I don't know most of these people. Some of them know me from TV or something like that, but they don't really know me. But if I open this book on any page and I start quoting out of this thing, believe it or not, they will know if I'm making mistakes. There'll be somebody in this room that can tell you, no, it's a mistake, you said it wrong. But I'm just gonna go to the first page. There we go. This is the first page. Hold it so the cameras can get a shot. <laughs> Hi, guys. All right. What's the first letter? First letter in the first page. Anybody know? Tell us. Ba. Everybody knows it's Ba. So what's the word? Bismillah. This is Arabic. And keep in, keep in mind, this is the English program we're doing. I'm speaking some form of English right now, right? Yeah? Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Next words. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Iyaka da'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Surat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim. Ah, mean. You don't have to say I mean except in Islam, but you know. Anyway. Now you could say, Gabriel, oh well, I mean, you know, that could be a rehearsal thing that people do every day. And guess what? You'd be right. You're right. We, That's what we I'm do say that. We'd say it every day, five times a day we pray, but there are a total of seventeen times we say it. So you could say, ah, they just know that. But by the way, how about if I mispronounce something? Would they catch it? Ghairul Magdubi Alehum Wala Dalin. Whoops. Huh? Huh? Ooh, yeah, Alehim. Huh? Actually, it's both because there is another pronunciation, but the common one. Now, I want to go to the other side, though. I'm going to go to the back. I'll go to the back. That was the front. This is the back. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allah. Allah. Lam. Wa lam. Wa lam. That's in the back. Whoops. How about the middle? It's not actually dead middle, okay, but it's close to the middle. In Adina? How about that? That's chapter 3, verse 19, by the way. Kuntin Chayra Umatin? That's chapter 3, verse 110. Now, what I'm showing you is that we know this in Arabic. Every Muslim on the earth knows this book in the Arabic language. That's 1.6 billion know that it's in Arabic. And we have some of it memorized, and all of us know it's only in Arabic. No, wait. This is where it gets good. How many in this room, you know somebody who memorized the whole entire Quran cover to cover? Raise your hand. In Arabic. You, you met somebody, you know somebody, somebody in your family. Raise your hand. I did this in a university in the United States. I said, now, for the Christians, raise your hand if you ever met anybody in your life who memorized the whole Bible in Hebrew and Kone Greek and they just went, what? Is that the language? 
My point is not to put down the Bible. My point is to put down the people who lie about it. Because the more I studied the Hebrew and the Kone Greek, the more I began to realize that what I was learning from the Quran in English, I was reading English, Yusuf Ali, you remember? It was the same thing. Especially the one I read to you just now and they helped me with. Lam yalid. Well, lam yalid. Listen to this. I'm going to give you a translation of, of scripture. God is not a man. And God is not the son of man. Is this in the Quran?